so today in physics we talked more about the relationships between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So displacement is how much an object's position has changed. Remember, it's very different from distance in that you could have a displacement of zero if it goes somewhere and comes back to the exact same spot because its final position is the exact same as its initial position. Yes, it may have gone a distance of three meters or so going back and forth, but its displacement from its initial spot is zero because it's back at its initial spot. The velocity is how fast it has done that, meaning how much ground it's covered in a given period of time. So that would be its displacement, its total displacement, divided by its total time. And you have the average velocity, when you're talking about the entire scenario, or the instantaneous velocity, which you're looking at some very specific time frame. Um, if you are thinking about calculus relationships, this, when you take the limit as delta t goes to zero, is the derivative of x with respect to time. So if you're looking at a graph, say, of x versus t, and you have a line, then the slope of this line is going to be your velocity. If you have a graph instead of v versus t, then the area under that curve is going to be your displacement. Now, if we look at how this velocity changes with respect to time, then that gives us the acceleration. We have our acceleration is equal to our change in velocity over our change in time. So this is taking one more step with regard to the rate of change of what the displacement is doing. And this has the same exact relationship there that if you had a graph of v and t, and you had a line, then the acceleration is going to be the slope at that line at any point. And if you were to look at the area under the curve of this, you would get the displacement, as I just mentioned before. And if you had a graph of a versus t, and looked at this graph, then the area under this segment here would be your velocity. All of these have directions attached to them because they're vectors. So you can have a positive velocity and a positive acceleration, or a negative acceleration and a negative velocity. Either way, it depends on what direction you're going. So, and also that has different physical context. If, say we define going to this direction, to the right, as positive, and going to the left as negative, and say a car were going in this direction with a certain velocity, we'll call it plus v, and it, you, sped, you put your foot on the gas pedal to make it go faster, then you'd be applying an acceleration in the same direction, which would make it speed up increase the speed, cover more distance for the displacement. Now, if instead you apply the brakes, then that means that you now have a negative acceleration that the car is experiencing, that the change in velocity is going the other way, and in which case you're slowing it down. Now, if you slow down the car until it's at a stop, and then give it a negative acceleration still, it will go this way, with a negative velocity with the same negative acceleration. All because it's going now to the left. Now, since this has both a negative acceleration and a negative velocity, that doesn't mean it's slowing down. It means it's going faster, but just to the left instead of to the right. So the direction is actually very, very important with looking at these different scenarios, and therefore the signs are very important. So if you have both of them going in the same direction, the velocity is going to increase. But if you have them going in different directions, the velocity is going to decrease. Now, if you have constant acceleration, then there are a few relationships you can write down for the different equations. Well, four different equations that relate 
a, x, v, and t. And the first thing is that if you have the average velocity, then that is just going to be equal to the two velocities you have divided by 2, okay, which also is equal to delta x over delta t. Okay. Now, if you rearrange some things in here and look at the definition of acceleration, which, I'll remind, is a is delta v over delta t, okay. And you write the final velocity as v, the initial velocity as v0, and the change in time as just t, saying that delta t is equal to t minus 0, because you can always write, write your initial time as being 0, as long as it's not dependent on something else in whatever scenario you're dealing with. Then you can say that v is equal to v0 plus at, and delta x is equal to v0 t plus 1 half at squared, and v squared is equal to v0 squared plus 2 a delta x, where these v's and a's could have negative signs, depending on what's going on. Your time is never going to have a negative sign, because time is always going forward. Okay? So, depending on what you're looking at, depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to use one of these different equations to figure out what's going on, and you plug something into a different equation. This one relates velocity, acceleration, and time. There's no distance, no displacement. This one relates displacement, velocity, time, acceleration, but not with the final velocity. It's only got the initial one in there. Okay? This one has no time anywhere in it. It's just the final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and displacement. They are all related because they all come from the idea that you're using constant acceleration. Okay? Um, and so, therefore, they're all legit for that situation. If you're not doing constant acceleration, then these don't apply anymore. But they are all different aspects of the same phenomenon, the same behavior, the same situation, and so you can use these different things in what I call an arsenal of equations to tackle this sort of problem. And so that's what we'll be dealing with especially more in the next class, especially when we start applying it to the vertical direction, in which case we have the free fall acceleration, the gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared down, and then we'll be do dealing with two-dimensional motion eventually.